Okay, so let's get started. I don't know what it is. So you want to know the URL for Oh, URL again? Yeah. Totally. URL is http tinyurl.com Octavia Workshop minus tar minus BC. <laughs> but it's on a very slow server. This is a very slow network. It's huge, yeah, it's like uh, six gigs or seven gigs. Mm. Okay, let's get uh, started. I just want to go quickly over who we all are. I'm German Eichberger with HP, and we, we have Adam Havel with Rackspace. Adam, where are you? Back there. Uh, we have Carlos also uh, somewhere back there, and Franklin somewhere back there. There's also other people we didn't write down, like Brandon and Doug. But you can, you can buffer them too. And, and here we have Michael with HP and Al sitting here if you need help. We have Suzanne with Intel here to help and also Stephen with uh, Blue Box and he told me it's very important that I say an IBM company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everybody... Is IBM a Blue Box company? Yes. IBM and Blue Box. We're yeah. renaming it to Big Blue Box. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so everybody, I know we didn't have enough USB sticks, so you can also download from the net, but not very fast, so it's better you guys share USB sticks when somebody is finished up and we will run them around. Oh, good. So then you need a really big computer, you need at least eight gigabyte of RAM because that's how big the image is, so we recommend like 16 <laughs> to have something performant. We, we put VMware workstation stuff on it, and the reason we use VMware is because we need a virtualization inside virtualization, which the other ones often don't have. And yeah, I mean, I like SSH clients. So basically, you copy the thing from the USB drive, or you extract from USB drives, and you can unzip, probably figured it out, JXVF, it's, it's in BC2 format, or 7-zip, and then uh, make sure that VMware has the VTX, which it should, so if you do it on your own and you have a Mac, got to make sure that you click that thing where I put the arrow so that you can run VMs inside VMs. Um, what's our agenda today? We want to talk about architecture and stuff, which Michael will do while you guys are still extracting. And then we show you a little bit of operations, something about troubleshooting, and then how you guys can all contribute and make Octavia even better than it is. And we. We can take questions throughout the whole uh, session, but we have an extra thing at the end in case you want to wait. Okay, I will turn it over to Michael with the introduction and architecture. Great, thanks, Kermit. Yeah, sorry about the USB sticks. Last week there were only 14 people signed up for this uh, hands-on, so we didn't have quite enough. Um, so this is a preview of what you'll see tomorrow. Uh, we have an Octavia session, a well, little LBAS session. Um, tomorrow afternoon, and uh, we're going to kind of cover the same architecture and then go into some demos for active standby and, and uh, that capability that's coming in Octavia. So uh, just to review, Octavia is an LBAS v2 driver. That means we plug into Neutron LBAS, which is uh, part of the Neutron code base. Um, so as you can see on the diagram, uh, Neutron's that, I don't know what color it's coming out on these screens, kind of pinkish color. <laughs> Um, and LBAS is a plug-in to that API server, and then inside of that we have the Octavia driver. The difference with Octavia is we have what we call Amphora, and in the current implementation those are service VMs, and that's where the actual load balancing happens in Octavia. Under the old reference driver in LBAS v2, that was HAProxy running in namespaces on your network service nodes. Um, so that's the difference here. Uh, as we spin up these service VMs that actually do the load balancing, so you can scale much, much wider. So just kind of going through the components, the driver that plugs into Neutron LBAS uh, communicates to um, the Octavia API server. So each of the components that have a gear, those are standalone processes um, that can be run on uh, what we call the controller, but you can also run them on separate hosts if that's how you want to deploy the environment. The API uses Oslo messaging um, to pass uh, configuring commands back to the Octavia worker, 
which uses um, OpenStack task flow to do the automation and provisioning of all the components inside Octavia, including the M4. Of course, we have a database, stores state, and configuration information. Uh, going across the other processes, we have the health manager. This component monitors the M4 and um, the load balancers that are running inside them and makes sure that they're all healthy and uh, running properly. If a component fails inside the M4, this will do a failover to a new M4. It'll build a new M4 or pull an M4 from your um, spares pool if you have that enabled. Moving along, housekeeping. Housekeeping is just kind of um, periodic processes that we need to run to maintain this environment. So if you have spares um, turned on, if you do have a spares pool, housekeeping maintains that spares pool, make sure that um, there's enough M4 running ready to be allocated to users. Um, it also does some other background tasks like cleaning up um, deleted records from the database after a, a given period. And uh, coming in M1, we'll also do uh, certificate rotation for the M4. So we use a secure communication between the controller and the M4 themselves, um, but the housekeeping will do rotation on those certificates automatically. Underlying all these components is the controller worker driver. So Octavia is built in a modular fashion. There are a lot of different drivers that allow operators to customize if they need to. So you can swap in and out various components of this ar architecture uh, to adapt to your environment. So right now, the controller worker is um, one driver that does uh, service VM provisioning. There are patches out there that will land sometime in M that uh, replaces that driver to facilitate containers. Uh, so we're moving towards having containers for the M4. One of the issues with containers is hot plugging the networks. Um, Octavia allows you to hot plug your member networks or your back end node networks. And uh, with containers right now, you pretty much have to rebuild that container to add additional network interfaces to it. So that's why there's a, a swap in driver for that. Uh, along the same lines, uh, we have an M4 driver. So that actually uh, implements the communication to these in individual M4. And we have a management network that's provisioned when we boot those. Uh, we have two drivers today in the code base. One is a REST-based API. The other is an SSH uh, implementation. We will probably be deprecating the SSH implementation um, in favor of the REST API going forward. Uh, certificate driver, uh, we do have TLS in here. So um, TLS offloading is a capability inside the M forum. And so we have interfaces that go out to Barbican as our secure store for those certificates and keys. And a compute driver, right now we only have one compute driver and that interfaces to Nova to spin up the service VMs for the M4. And a network driver. And again, we currently have one implementation. We have two? Yeah, we have the container. Well, the container, yeah, it's work in progress. Um, and then a network driver that uh, interfaces to Neutron. That's kind of a high-level overview. Are there any questions I can answer before we get started? Anybody else need a USB stick? Okay. Question? It is all implemented inside that controller worker driver. We're using task flow, so there are flows that do the provisioning of the service VMs um, and do the failover flows. Yeah, it's, it all works out of the box. It's that we made it very modular, so if you want, need to change something because your cloud is different, you can. But you don't have to manually provision your service VMs. That's part of the, mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, which layer is the uh, Which layer is the load balancer was the question? Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, layer three right now. Yeah. And four, yeah. Um, there is a, a patch that's in progress. It didn't quite make Liberty for full layer seven. Yeah, layer uh, seven's coming in, uh, in M, yeah, Mitaka. Yeah, so there's a patch out there. It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's, it's Steve who he, he claims it. weeks out, so you he, heard it there. He will do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have it done by four this afternoon. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any other questions? Awesome, let's get started. Okay, then uh, yeah, we'll show the slides and then you guys have to try to do that stuff. <laughs> okay. So let's, everybody has his thing. Actually, who has it now up and running, the VM, hands up? So I guess we should uh, entertain people. <laughs> yeah, let's hand out our stickers. Um, so I, so that will basically, the, the way we set up the image, you can log in, use our Ubuntu, password Ubuntu. We are big. We, we do a lot of stuff with Ubuntu. We, we put everything under the stack user. Uh, did? Yeah, I think we did, yeah. And basically, you never, and we use the admin. So we only did the admin tenant, so you do everything as an admin tenant. And yeah, and, and once the thing comes up and you log in, the first thing, if, and you are basically becoming the stack user, you have to run the script command. So you can get uh, two things. And then you should probably, I think you have to run rejoin, and then everything should be good. I thought we added that. Did we? Yeah, I think. So, yeah. Did everybody have a USB stick? You're just busy with extracting starting. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Very good. So let's see if. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody. Yeah, everybody gets a sticker. Put it on your laptop so we can see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Active passive is coming with M1. We have the we have a patch which works, but it didn't make it for for Liberty. So we have, yeah the, the so when we so we wanted to have uh, Octavia be the reference implementation, and that meant so every week we got closer to the deadline. We had to throw stuff over so to make the date, yeah. And so so yeah we yeah we have it all written, and there's even active active uh, proposals out there. So yeah, so it's all. Oh, the, the URL, I still have to upload it. I will uh, tell you guys the URL. Uh, I've been giving the URL for the slide. The URL slide? No, I don't have the slide. I only have the... Uh, oh, that's the wrong direction. Want to go back to that one? That slide? Okay. So where are we at with uh, some, so who has it now running? So we should get started. Mm -hmm. The slides, yeah, I need to upload them first. So. Yeah, I will. they're not uploaded yet. So I can make, a, so if I learn something which is wrong, I can still fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so they will come up after this session. Okay, so we are, are we at people have it now running? Where are we? That's good. Let's move, let's move to our, to the next slide. <laughs> so once you are the, the admin user, then we can do stuff. I'm too fast, I need to go one back, okay. <laughs> no, pro no problem. It actually takes 10 minutes to unpack. We tested that. So take pictures for now. Oh, yeah. I think we need rejoin now. I think if I'm not going to rejoin, I'll just 
doesn't show to IPs then they're yeah, yeah, yeah. And free time, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, actually, have maybe have the slides. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna give it another two or three minutes for people to get their images extracted and running. And if you haven't got it running by then, you know, wave your hand. If you're having problems or whatever, we'll try and come and help you. We have again several people here who are just here for tech support to help you get this demo working. Um, but otherwise, we're going to have to proceed, or we're not going to be able to finish this before the end of the session. So, so another two minutes. I can keep it. Huh? Like three microphones. <laughs> oh, that's true. Okay. I don't know that you want me to have a microphone, though, Grandma. Normally not. <laughs> yes, it's part of the official Liberty release, um, though. We, though we are not really in the integrated release, so so they changed everything when they went to uh, Open Tent, but we released it uh, for Liberty. And and if you if you use Neutron Albas, you actually have to use Octavia because it's now the reference implementation. Yeah. I think that's zero point five something. The version we put yeah, up there. Yeah, zero point five three or something like that is what the version of Octavia. Yeah, the Octavia version. And it, it, it's, it's up on pip, so you can pip install it or whatever. And the, uh, I think the dev stack scripts automatically pull it in when you do the Alvas v2. Yes. Oh, well, since you're here, or you can use the dev stack we made for you. Yeah, <laughs> if you want. That's part of the image. Yeah, the whole reason for the image is that it, you know, it normally takes two hours to stand up a dev stack like this. So we, wanted, we knew we didn't have two hours for you guys to wait. So that's why we have a VMware uh, image for you with a frozen or a saved state. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, let's go ahead and proceed. Next. It's been two minutes. Next slide. Yep. OK. So, so the first thing you do is Nova list, because we put two uh, web servers on there, which listen on port 80. And, and, and you can go user demo. That's wrong. It should be user admin. These, these web servers are extremely basic. If you want to go ahead and curl one of those IPs, you should feel free to do so, and you'll see what's going to be output is basically, hello, I am this IP, or welcome to this IP, I think is what it says. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole point of that is you want, we just have a really lightweight, these web servers are simulating your application environment. So it, you know, a load balancer, of course, is load balancing stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is the back end. Those two IPs are the back end we've already set up for you. Yes. And now we'll go ahead and mm -hmm. do the load balancing services. So, so, so who? For whom Novalist worked? Somebody. Okay, you have one. Working. Working. Okay, cool. Working on here too. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you need to remember those uh, two IPs. <laughs> yes. And then we start. Uh, then we start creating a load balancer. So the command to do that is neutron lbas, which indicates is a lbas v2 thing. Lbas minus load balancer create. And then we give it a name lb1 and. And private subnet is, you can specify any subnet, but there's only a private subnet there. <laughs> yeah. This is very basic dev stack install. Then there's one trick you have to wait until it becomes active before you can do the next thing. Otherwise, it will give you errors. If it doesn't become active, raise, yeah, shout out and we send one of our lab tags. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a while, yeah. So, so basically what it does, it's starting a Nova VM inside DevStack, which takes takes some time. So, so it's firing up a Nova VM, and it's not a tiny one like Cirrus. It's, it's a full Ubuntu thing. Yeah, released right now. We're, we yeah, are always thinking making it smaller, but it's, it's yeah, difficult. I haven't had time to make it small yet. Yesterday I had a Manila lab session, and, mm -hmm. I, and the same thing, spin off a VM. Mm -hmm. uh, Six minutes for me, my dev stack. Oh. Again, I was running on 
Yeah, that's that's why we yeah yeah, yeah I try to send out an, I try to get an email sent out and tell people don't come with only five gigs of memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 recommend sixteen or more. That's for just this test. For yeah, that's when we develop, but I yeah, think it should should work. Okay. We will post the presentation. No. So right now the, the presentation well, is not we, online right now, on but German is going to do that after this stuff? presentation's over. If you if you want to make sure that you get a copy of it, just take a picture of the image. But okay, we will we, put it online. Yeah, we put it online. That there's a link for us to post it uh, in the schedule app, and we will put it there after the presentation. Yeah, we should have probably done that before, but then we couldn't fix any errors. Like that's <laughs> a demo here, yeah. which is supposed to be admin. Right now, take two minutes, take two minutes, and then okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have the PDF. There's an extract as PDF. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So, so, so you gave them the Google thing? Yeah. Uh, no, it's do like an. What do I do? I can, I can just do it. Okay. You can do it on your computer. Or? We'll get that for you guys in a minute. Okay. Uh, and make sure whatever you post that you fix this thing that says demo. And say, uh, <laughs> We're not seeing anything. Oh, there it goes. Coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So somebody has an active. Does it turn active for somebody? So so check is basically you do this with a neutron Albers load balancer list or something. Yeah. yeah. Somebody has an active load balancer. Yay. Good. Then, then you have to create a listener, as as written here. Then a pool, and then a member. And that's one of the reasons why in Vancouver people said we should implement a function which just says, "Give me a load balancer." <laughs> yeah, Brandon. Yeah. So, Brandon wanted to do that. What you're seeing here is actually sort of the hierarchy of how the objects fit together within uh, the load balancing version two service. So the load balancer contains um, the, the, the IP. Yeah. The, uh, the listener is, is basically the port, and the pool is where we're going to load balance to, and members are members of the pool. So those mm -hmm. are the machines that are actually make up your, your load balanced yes. configuration. And, and if you're familiar with what the load balancing API v1 was, you couldn't put multiple ports on the same IP and we changed that for V2 so you can now have like something which listens on AD and 443 which is very common so you can redirect people or have protected content, non-protected content mm -hmm. under the same IP address which is very useful. Well there's lots of other hooks but we'll talk about that tomorrow in our talk Yeah. as to why it's so much better. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Okay. If you're if you're getting stuck on anything, uh, raise your hand. And we'll send a run over there to help you out. Can uh, Carlos? There were some hands up there in the back. Could you raise your hand again if you're if you're stuck? Okay, we'll try and get some people out here. Actually, I'm maybe you need to send Brandon forward. Okay. If you're having problems, the first thing to do is to check to make sure you're running the commands in the right order because it is a hierarchical uh, data structure. So Yeah, you can't really start with making a member before you have a load balancer right. or something like that. So it's really important to keep this order. Once you have stuff, you can do whatever you want and it just changes it. But yeah. Question, good. Oh, so the, yeah, the big qu his question is, can you do this without Octavia? And yes, the, the um, LBAS v2 from the prior release uses the um, HA proxy driver. And the, what Octavia gets you is scalability and the potential for active, passive, active, active, failover, those sorts of things, and, yeah. and scalability. What's happening here is for every load balancer you create, for every listener you create, you're getting a VM that is running its own HA proxy rather than sharing HA proxies and just adding configuration data to the. Okay. To the yeah, and you can, of course, use the same stuff and have a hardware load balancer behind if you buy an A10 from Doug in the back. Yeah, he'll happily sell you one. 
Oh, he already left, yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, then go, go buy NetScaler. <laughs> no, yeah. So, okay. Uh, is, so somebody had a chance that it went to the curl, curl the whip, Probably and um, something came back. Somebody was able to curl the, the whip? No. Takes a while. <laughs> hmm. Pending grade. You can also do Nova list to see what it's doing, what came out. Yeah, so you have yeah, to. Yeah, hmm. If it's stuck in pending grade, uh, oh, maybe it took too long. So somebody, yeah. That's, that's usually Michael's speciality. So, so it can happen when you have a very slow computer or not enough RAM that it got stuck in pending grade. But what a system does, it, it fires up the VM and then starts to talk to it, but there's a timeout, which we kind of did generous, but, but for small machines, not generous enough. So, so then it can get stuck in pending grade. And yeah. Probably. Okay, who, who all has been able to do this test? Cool. Okay, we have two people survived. It's like Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's not a good sign, German. It's not a good sign. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we need to get okay, better. This is the previous page again. Sure, go for it. I don't care. It doesn't matter. How tiny you are. It does not matter at all. We're, we're working on that. We're getting you the slides. Got it? Yeah. Put this URL somewhere. I just used Duplex URL shortener. This will be pretty better because it's. Yes, I know. Yeah, we know. Let's put a. I did this. Let's put it just on top of here. You can type faster than I can. Okay, we put a slide, Adam was kind enough to put the slides up, and they are now at, put it at the top. <laughs> the slides are up there. O9, so it's, so it's Google and then O9 C5JN. I hope it's a big O. <laughs> yeah, it's a big O. Okay, that's not a zero, that's a lowercase, or sorry, uppercase O. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so should we keep going? We need to get through this. Time wise. When, when are we done, actually? No, not that done. soon, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So we created a load balancer, if that worked for you. So here are some things about uh, how to get information about the M4. Hey, Gohan, before you move on, mm. who has load balancer created? Raise your hands up high so we can see them. There's only five people who got it done. Yeah, pre go to, you want to go to the previous slide again? Okay. We should, we should do something like that. Yeah, probably. Oh, 
Oh, sure. You want to do that? If you're stuck on something, can you raise your hand? Okay. Yeah, if you need some help. Okay. We have a request for the first page again. Okay. First page again. One page. Huh? Very one page. Yeah. This one. You want you the slide there? Is that what you're after? Okay, good. Okay. Hmm. Or we make that bigger. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. don't. I just, he's getting a photo of it, so we're good. Yeah. They will have adopted database and did it. Yeah, that's that's a little bit beyond what we're doing here, so I, I think he's, we're gonna just have to move on. Move on. Unless unless you want to get on there and fix it for him, so <laughs> You want to move it back now? Okay. Okay, so, so, so let's move on and how you guys can get information about the load balancer or about the amphora. So, we, so the amphoras are normal uh, Nova VMs here, so you can do a Nova list and you can say minus minus name amphora and it will only show you the amphora because that's how we name them. Then you just see those. And, and that's a way for you to control what's going on in your system, how many M4s have been created by users, or whatever. So these commands here aren't normally, as, as a regular user, you're not going to be doing any of these. But this is, this is actually hitting the, there's an API that lives on the M4 itself. Yeah. And this is how it's accessed. So, um, but for the most part, you're not going to be talking directly to the M4s. You're going to be talking to the Neutron LBAS version 2 API. Mm -hmm. This is basically when you need to troubleshoot your system and, yes, and want to get information what's going on there. So in each M4, we run a little uh, agent, and, and those curl commands allow you to talk to this agent and find out uh, what, what's running on there, how many load bands, uh, how many listeners, what the details are, and also learn about those things. So since, it's, since you want to get you guys up to become developers, we show you all the... Yeah, this is, this is so. as, a, as a cloud administrator or operator, you might run these commands. As a tenant, you would never run these commands. You wouldn't have access to them. Yeah, you've got to be on the management network yeah. to these, do these that. These are troubleshooting only. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you should try them out. So somebody, guess we... Yeah. All right, move on to the next one. Next one you want to do? Okay. So since they are usual, so, so since they are normal Nova VMs, you can SSH into those and figure stuff out. In, in the dev stack ones, we have SSH enabled, so you can actually do troubleshooting and development. If you deploy it in production, you might want to switch that off, so to have one less uh, thing for people to hack you. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but here you can basically SSH in there, and we have, um, and, and what we call, and on each M M4, we fire up something we call an agent, and you can uh, figure out the status of it by just running a normal service M4 agent status. You can also check on uh, and the HA proxy, so, so for each listener you create, we start a separate HA proxy process, so if you put one listener on it, like we did in the example we've seen, you should only find one HA proxy process. Maybe there are two because, but yeah, this. But, but and we basically name them uh, with listener ID, and if you put two on them, then you can can check the status of those two. That's another thing for troubleshooting. Yeah, this again is not something a tenant would normally do. Tenants will not have access to log into the M4s at all. 
the, the, the amphoras are basically hidden from the tenants in the sense that um, this is that's just part of the back-end service and the tenant doesn't have to worry about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is all for uh, a cloud operator or a cloud administrator to troubleshoot if there's a problem. These are things that you can do to get into the amphoras and poke around and see what's going on. Then we wanted to show you uh, another thing. So we have uh, an, the, the fa so we have failover in the current version. The failover is not uh, instantaneous like we are wanted to be. So it basically it has to detect it and then schedule a new VM. Yes. To, to bring it up, but uh, but but nevertheless, um, but if you uh, if you kind of deployed it in a production environment, you are the cloud operator. What happens a lot is there might be a security update for the Ubuntu image we use for the M4, and you want to kind of swap out the images with a new M4 image. And so you would have to uh, instigate a failover. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the way you do that, so we have to prepare that a bit. So we have to set up health monitoring in the VM. So, so there's a so we have uh, s sort of still um, a, a bug in there that, that we don't can't listen on the uh, management network. With. So, so basically, our our health manager runs a screen session in the dev stack, and so it can't really listen that easily on the management network. We have to have to make that better. So you have to put in the um, um, as a controller IP port list the the IP. It has on on the on the network, so so that's basically when you do an, run an if config, that's the IP VMware will assign to it. Yeah. And since this is a, a baked image that you're all working with, it should probably be that IP, right? Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. It's in the baked image. If you do your own stuff, you got to figure it out. Yeah. So we then want to restart OCW, which is the controller worker. This is, this is, if you've never messed around with DevStack before, this will be very confusing, this bit. But if you've done work in DevStack before, then what you want to do is find the screen that has the controller worker on it and restart it after you have made this edit. Yeah, and then uh, basically you want to restart a controller worker, you want to restart a health manager. Then, we, then you have to create another load balancer. <laughs> so you should have that in your shell uh, Back thing, history. Yeah, yes, yeah. Bash. Then, uh, then, in order to basically get a failover done, you would SSH in a DM4 at least on on Dev Stack. Stop the agent, and then the thing will automatically failover for you because the the way our health monitoring works is we say so so when you fire up the DM4. Uh, our VM, our VM sends every couple seconds a UDP message to the health monitor, and when this UDP message doesn't arrive for some time, then we assume it's dead, mm -hmm. and we we'll schedule a replacement. So that's the algorithm there. So what this is doing, this is just basically simulating a failure of the Amphora by killing the the agent on the Amphora that sends the health check. Uh, you know, updates to the health monitor. That's when that basic. stops, the health monitor goes, oh, that thing must be dead. And then it schedules a, a replacement. Schedules the, yeah, it's the heartbeat system. Yeah, exactly, heartbeat. Yeah, and can configure all those things, how long it should wait or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's all, that's all configurable. But um, for our purposes here, that, you know, just read the docs if you want to know how to mm -hmm. configure that. Can you do that with the Totally. Mm -hmm. This is already a very complicated demo, we know. So if all goes well, when you enable the, the health monitor and, uh, and then simulate the failure of the M4 that you have running, the health monitor will notice that that's dead. It will kill the old M4 and start a new one. I will first start a new one and then... Oh, starts a new one and then... Oh, sorry. Yes, or first starts backwards. a new one, then kills the uh, yeah, old one. Yeah, starts a new one, then kills the old one. Yeah, something like that. And that's, that's how we... This is the very, very most rudimentary version of high availability for this service. 
Um, there are, again, in the works, we have very close the active standby, which would have two M4s running per, per load balancer. And what those M4s do is they act in an uh, active standby uh, configuration using uh, Linux Heartbeat, right? It's, it's, it is Linux Heartbeat mm -hmm. that we're using, right? Okay, good. Um, and, keep uh, alive, Steve, you call it. Keep alive, Steve. Keep right. alive, Steve. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and what happens is if if uh, the, the basically the M4s will monitor each other, and if one of them dies, um, well then the other one will take over. Yeah. Um, there's also again a blueprint in the works right now to do active active mode, which is considerably more complicated than any of this stuff. But what's really cool about active active is it'll allow okay. for horizontal scaling of the actual service delivery. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, mic. Uh, the question is just um, those virtual machines, uh, the load balancing virtual machines, how do they get patched or lifecycle managed? I mean, they are running for um, the time, how long the load balancer um, is defined, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, if you want to if you want to patch them, then you would have to instigate this failover we are describing here. So you would have to manually or have a script, which basically then goes to each of them and shuts off the agent, which doesn't shut off the load balancing, and then the system will detect that and then replace it, schedule a replacement for that, and that will allow you to basically uh, roll out new M4 images. And, and yeah, we, so it's, it's a little bit pedestrian, but uh, we show you the process and you can then use something like a fabric or if you have any of those tools to kind of automate that, that replacement. You know. So yeah, the, um, it's important to note here that the M4 is, uh, part of the, the stuff we didn't show, uh, show you guys when it comes to setting up uh, Octavia, which, uh, we, which takes forever, that's why. It, it takes a long time, which is why we didn't do it for this demo, but part of the process of setting up Octavia to work is you have to create a, a, a Nova image uh, that you, it gets stored in Glance, which is the baked version of a, the uh, Octavia um, Amphora, which is so, so yeah, disk, Im disk image builder, sorry. Disk image builder, which images. Yeah, so, it, well, but then it we store it in, in, well, in Glance, ultimately. Go ahead. So, uh, just really quick, the version of the slides that are, that's uploaded, I guess, is not the newest. I don't know where, if you guys made changes locally or something, but um, oh. but anyway, so the only real thing to take note of on the version that's uploaded is it says something about using uh, demo demo as the the user with OpenRC. Ignore that. Just do with admin. Do admin admin. Yeah, on that admin one. admin. All the whole demo is running under the admin user. So right now. Also, yeah. Doesn't have to be. That isn't like. A it was just how we set up Right, it's just how the image is set up. I'll see if I can re-upload, if I can find whatever version this is of the slides and re-upload. Okay. Okay. the networks of that here. Yeah. That makes sense. No, I need to get that up. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to replace that Google link. Yeah. No, we will, yeah, we put slides up. Okay. I, I, do we have any questions from people at this time? So yeah, that's why we show the similar the, the failover simulations. So you guys know how to replace those images if they're problematic. Oh, I have no idea. You have it. Oh, yeah. Shall I start? Yes, go ahead. Uh, the go question ahead. is. Uh, you mentioned that um, you support also, besides virtual machines, um, containers to, to the, the, or later the code on? Is, the code is worked. In, in. So one Why? of the things you have to understand about Octavia right now is it basically does all the features of LBAS version 2 without a whole lot of extras yet because all those extras, we have code that's actually under review to do that, but we put it all on hold in order to get this to the form that it is now for Liberty. But I expect within the next two months, we're going to see a lot of these features start landing. And in Mataka, this is going to be a much more powerful system than it is now. But among, among that, there is code in the work to make it so that it works with containers, but it's not landed yet. Well, I guess my bigger question is, um, why did you not focus on containers first? And my question to that is, what was the actual big limitation with the namespace stuff? Oh, the, the limitation with the namespace stuff is that you don't get uh, the high availability. 
or scalability. Or the scalability. So, so if the namespace, when your compute node where the namespace runs dies, then all the load balancer there are gone. Oh. Whereas as here, when your VM dies, we schedule a new one in case you have a redundant control plane. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as a scalability, when you put a thousand load balancers on one compute node, then it kind of box down too. Whereas here, you can use just buy more computers and it gets scheduled in, in your cloud. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but don't we have for the for the router um, the router agent this schedule thing where you just have multiple router nodes and then they just scale up multiple namespaces with the routers there? Couldn't we do the same thing with load balancing? Uh, so the other the other issue you're going to run into, which is more subtle, um, is that when you start talking about uh, TLS and transport layer security, that is a process that does not scale vertically very far. Um, typically, the, the most the, the TLS termination stuff is done with the OpenSSL library, and the process that does that is mostly single-threaded. It's supposed to be multi-threaded, but it's mostly single-threaded. And since processor speeds are not increasing, you'll find that with the modern standard of having 2048-bit uh, keys as, as standard SSL key, you can do approximately uh, between 120 and 160 new connections per second on a modern processor, and it doesn't matter how many cores it has. Um, that's that's going to be a hard limit on, on the actual, and that, that has to do with how it does the SSL decryption uh, when you're doing TLS termination. So the idea behind what Octavia ultimately is going to be delivering when we get to the active-active mode is you can have multiple M4s that are all servicing the same uh, load balancer IP. So you can then have truly uh, horizontally scalable service delivery, and then you can actually have you know an SSL site which can do thousands of new connections per second. Um, you're not going to be able to do that using the namespace driver ever. It will never happen. Because the, t the TLS is broken? Yeah. That sounds like it. Yeah, well, it, but it's been broken for years and years. It, and that's okay. kind of by design. You don't want TLS to be too easy to break. Mm -hmm. So you, you, the, the whole point behind TLS and the reason why they keep on increasing the key sizes that are standard is you want to keep it somewhat difficult to break that. So the trend is, I mean, what is it, four years ago? Uh, 1,024 bit keys were standard, and then they decided sort of all of the, S all of the, the uh, uh, SSL certificate authorities decided, nope, we're all going to do now 2048 bit keys. Well, we had a five fold decrease in performance when that happened overnight. So when, when these authorities then decide that 4096 bit keys are the standard that everyone has to use, you, you, can, you can expect another five fold decrease. And if you think that, you know, uh, 120 new connections per second is bad, imagine when it's down to 20. And that's what you can do on a single core. Mm -hmm. So the idea was you need to be able to scale this horizontally. I think besides that, the, the namespace driver is like a shared. Correct. Right. There's, and there's, also, yeah, there's, also there's, the namespace driver is a shared uh, environment. So you end well, up with things like noisy neighbor effect uh, with yeah. your load balancers, which this eliminates to some degree because the, you're using these virtual machines or containers or whatever that have their own. Uh, and they run in compute. Right. They run in compute, and compute is designed to handle this. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, to limit the effect of noisy neighbors on a host. Yep. So um, you don't run into a case where you happen to be provisioned to the same namespace uh, agent that's running five other people who are doing a ton of TLS and now you have like no, no connections per second because mm -hmm. there's other people using your resources. So those are the, and, I mean, and then that's really the reason why Octavia was even created yeah. the way it was. Oh, okay. okay, and then to your other question about the containers, why we yeah. didn't do that first. Well, we also have the, the companies sponsoring right. stuff have certain roadmaps, mm -hmm. and we so and VMs was just the, the thing we wanted to do first, and containers yeah, second. Yeah, because no one had containers running yeah. in their clouds. This TLS thing prevented us from using con containers. No, 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 no. We, can, no we can use containers. The only reason we do, we didn't do containers, but well, TLS prevents us from uh, using the, um, the the namespace driver. But containers, we can also schedule on different, uh, if you do active, active, you can schedule it on different hardware and scale it out that way. Yeah, we will schedule them with, with whatever. Yeah, we, we will do it once we get there. So we just, we just had to do something first because we wanted to do this active, active. And then every, all of us have Nova VMs, and mm -hmm. now we the people sponsoring HP and Rackspace, we are trying well, as a hoping on a container thing, and we have to and then be... We're, we're, and we're pretty good as a development team, but we're not, you know, uh, we can't do this overnight. So it takes a while to get these things developed and 
Okay. And we're trying, to, we're trying to also get stability here, because you'll, you'll notice that this, this is a process that can go wrong in many ways. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make it so that it's... And I guess we should... And, and it, if you look at it, we started anybody, like... Anybody feel that they're missing features? We're looking for computers. Yes. Thank you, Suzanne. Yes. Oh, yeah. Help us out, please. So, yeah. and, and also for an OpenStack project, we developed it all pretty rapidly, I think. How long are we doing it now? One and a half years, maybe. And, and we got a new API oh, sure. version. We got the whole Nova stuff that now scales. We have active. OK. OK. Is actually yeah. part of the OpenStack okay. um, mm -hmm. kind of uh, ecosystem. So as you contribute to Octavia, you do get ATC status, which we weren't yeah. going, getting um, when it was in the stack. Oh, board. I got it. I'm, so the other thing is, I, I've been requested. Uh, I, I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry, but I've been asked to tell how people could potentially contribute. Oh. So, uh, I'm going to show that one. There's a lot of stuff here in, this, in these slides that we're not getting to right now. So uh, the, the, the first thing you can do if you want to contribute, I would recommend start attending our weekly IRC meetings. They happen at, what is it? Uh, Wednesdays. So uh, at 2000 UTC, which yes. ends up being, you know, 1 p.m. Pacific, or you got it there. Right? I, I got it all here. So okay. it's 2100 UTC, it's one Pacific. So most of us, in, yeah, half of us are in Pacific. But we are trying to get more people. We have, a, yep. we have an IRC channel. You can find us, OpenStack minus yeah. Elbas. So we, we are trying to be there pretty active and hang out there a lot. Um, there, there's a design session for Neutron Elbas version 2 and Octavia and Firewalls of Service and a couple other things tomorrow morning at 11 AM. So come to that. We are also giving a more extensive talk on Neutron Elbas version 2 and, well, what, what is in Liberty and what we're planning on doing after Liberty. That's tomorrow in, I believe, uh, well, one of these rooms here. You can check the schedule, no, but it's, it's tomorrow. 2.40. 2.40. 2.40 Thursday. Yeah, 2.40 Thursday, Thursday, yeah. Af Thursday. Afternoon, I should have. Okay, you're good. Yeah. So um, other than that, you know, what, what we specifically need help with, of course, reviews and code. You know, <laughs> so yeah. that's, uh, and, and you can best know how you can, contribute in an effective way by also making sure you engage with other community members here. The people you see walking around are people who've been doing this for a while. And, uh, and, and again, the IRC channel and the IRC meetings are probably the best ways to get started there. Okay. Um, did you want to go back to some of the other troubleshooting slides? Other tips and tricks? I should probably do some more tips and tricks. Okay. Really? Sweet, we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time, so maybe okay. we, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can, maybe we can show you guys more stuff. So, so there's, so so another troubleshooting tip is the log files. So when you get it straight, we we basically only log stuff info level and up, or not even that. I think yes. it's just error level, error and fatal, and you can basically. Uh, uncomment debug equals false and put there true, then you get all the debug logs, which are huge. Or you can verbose, then you get the info logs. And in order for the log, for, in order for any change to the Octavia config to become active, we have to restart all our bosses, all our processes, services starting with O, like CWs, the control worker, mm -hmm. and so on. So if you actually want to go back to the, you can go back to the architecture screen and show them what they're working with here. Yeah. So yeah, I, I realize that some of these things like OCW and OAPI and what, you know, whatever, that might not be that easy to understand exactly what we're talking about. If you look at the architecture slide, which we can pull up again here, this is something that Michael created, which is pretty good. Um, all of those things uh, usually correspond to one of these uh, things. So any, anything that has a driver usually has an, uh, a, a, basically a daemon that goes with it. <laughs> So, um, oh, sorry, Octavia API, uh, the, these, the, I'm sorry, these are the daemons here. Um, the API is its own thing. There's the worker, and this is um, um, the, 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 most of the work in the controller gets done here. We have our health manager, which is, of course, watching for any dead M4s or problems with the M4s. And then they have the housekeeping manager, which handles the uh, cleanup and scheduling of dead M4s or uh, managing the spares pool if you have configured a spares pool. Um, do you want? Just, I guess we can, we can go back go. to the other slide now. Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the troubleshooting. Increase 
Yeah. Okay. So then we the, the certain log files, so they are all in abstract logs, all starting with O. We have O API, uh, uh, which is our API server, CW, the control worker, HK health, uh, uh, that's uh, house housekeeping and HM health manager. And here do and here I wrote down what the uh, logs contain. O API is basically API server, CD requests coming when you do a neutron Albus command, it will translate into requests you see if they're coming in. If they don't come in, then you know where to troubleshoot. Um, OCW does the most work, so so that starts uh, VMs the and talks to everything. CW stands for controller worker. Mm -hmm. the, the the housekeeping thing will, will, will basically lead them for us out of the database and later do certificate rotation in M1. Mm -hmm. So then, so basically we we secure the communication between M4 and uh, controller worker with, with certificates and one uh, design principle uh, coming from the anger people is that we should re rotate our certificates very rapidly so yes. people when they own an M4 they can't really uh, get much further because we just rotate a certificate and then they... You're talking about if, if an M4 has a security issue and somebody breaks mm -hmm. into one, yeah. Or, or if the certificates get exposed and just rotate them out. Yeah, and we limit the exposure there mm -hmm. by doing that. So, so we want to automating that. And then the health manager is the part which will check on the, uh, basically gets the heartbeat. So each M4 sends out heartbeats. We get them, store them in a database, and do stuff. The other thing we send over with the health manager is the status of, of your members or your listener as it gets recorded and put in our database. Yes. And we, and we need to, that's one thing we need to think how to get that and put up more upstream so people can monitor that. Yep. There's a lot of work to do still on this. Then but then we also have log files on the M4. So, so, if you, so if you develop and things and you want to develop against the agent which is running there, you can also SSH into, into the M4 and look at the agent logs and see what's going on there. <coughs> see if the M4 is sending heartbeats that will be logged, if the API it will lock the API comments and what the error messages are and everything. So, so, so if you want to develop on that end, you, you probably need to log in there. We also run a database, which is MySQL right now. We might rethink that. Uh, but anyway, so, so we have our own database, Octavia database. We have tables, lots of tables in there. The most important ones is the M4 table, which has all the M4 information in there with IP address and everything. And then we have, of course, load balancer, listener, member, pool, health monitor, what you would expect. And that mirrors, to some degree, what we have in the Albas v2 side. On the, on the neutron side in the database. Yes. Uh, the imp uh, another important table is the M4 health table. I said we, every time we receive a heartbeat from the M4 agent, we store that in there, and so it will tell you the last time you get a heartbeat from that. Correct. And, and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so if you need to troubleshoot your system, you're operating suddenly, everything goes crazy, you can see if there's something going on there. And. We talked about how to contribute and more questions. Yeah. yeah. So right now the failover isn't that fast because we have to we, we have to so basically we, we record a heartbeat so we have to wait and then we wait a little bit until the heart, we didn't see a heartbeat so it's so it's in the minute so maybe a minute or something our current failover strategy that's why we want to do active active passive. So we can fail over much, much faster in, in like sub in like seconds. Yeah. So right now it's it, it it we have to it has to be dead for long enough for us to notice, and then it's the amount of time it takes to either take over an M4 from your spares pool if you have one, or to spin up a new one, um, and then configure it. Configuring it and everything once it's up is actually very fast, um, but it's a matter of waiting for Nova. Um, but with, with active standby, with the M4 is monitoring each other, we expect to have uh, you know sub five second yeah. failovers. And, and, and it all depends what, so, so if you are like a cloud service provider, it, it's probably okay to wait a minute for failover if you have a, if it's a dev environment or something like that. So you, so you might not wanna spend the, the money on having two VMs running. And so we give that flexibility, what you wanna do, so. Yep. So yeah. And have you ever seen a scenario where you have two laptops? We, we wanna do two active. 
So you're talking about like an active standby scenario where both of them go active at the same time. That, yeah, it is. So the, the nice part about load balancers is load balancers are not that stateful. So recovery from that matter is easy. You just kill one of them. Um, and then you haven't really lost any data. You just have a service that's very, very, well, it, it won't work when they're both active uh, like the, that. Um, so, so, so the way active passive works is that we have then two load balancers running. They talk to each other. They share some sticky connections. And we'll do a demo tomorrow at a talk, or Michael do the demo where it worked. But if both would become active, we, you still have the problem that there, there's an IP address which, has, which only points to one of them. Mm -hmm. so, so it doesn't really matter if the other one is active too. They might just yeah, get confused a bit. But, but you will only have one which actually serves requests. I mean, it's obviously not a good state to be in. But in honesty, all honesty, the, the router is going to send the packets one way or another. So. Um, you know, having said that, there is a blueprint in, in place to try and do active active because that's really truly where we need to go with Activia in order to truly deliver uh, horizontal service scalability in terms of the actual like TLS terminated mm -hmm. service. Um, and that is going to be quite a bit more complicated once that's done. Um, but in that case, it's actually safe for, it, it's desirable for multiple M4s to be yeah. serving the same IP. Yeah, and, and so. Steve is very excited about it since he's <laughs> active, active. Spec. No, that's it's actually a, a, a blueprint that's uh, basically authored by the IBM research team uh, from Haifa, and they are working on it right now. Uh, in fact, we're just uh, they're doing proof of concept code. Yeah, I've already told yeah. you guys that you should be reviewing that blueprint. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, it's coming. It's coming. Um, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff we have slated for Metaka. The good news is a lot of the stuff that we wanted to get into Liberty that we put off so that we could get Octavia in um, as, a, as a reference driver for LBAS v2. Um, that stuff is really close. It's uh, seriously just weeks away, and then that's going to land. So um, I know at Blue Box, we once that stuff is in and, and stable, uh, well, stable enough, we are going to uh, almost certainly be running off of, off of head until it's actually in the official Metaka release. Um, and uh, from our perspective, a lot of our customers really need features like uh, uh, active standby, they need TLS termination, and they need layer 7 uh, switching support. So those are all things that were high priority for us, which is why they're happening is because we, we put engineering resources behind it. If there's a particular feature that your company needs um, and that it doesn't offer it and it isn't on one of our roadmaps, then come, come to these meetings, start contributing, uh, and, and you know, we're, we're not here to try and obstruct anyone from being able to develop new features at all. Um, we just, you know, obviously we're all, we all have employers, we know who's paying us, and we know what they want, yeah. and that's what we're going to be working on first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. the other thing to keep in mind, mm -hmm. so we just, so, so if you go with the Liberty release, we really put it in, so, so there will be a lot of hardening which still needs to be done. Yes. So, so we expect, so we haven't, so, so we are all very excited and trying, want to put it into production, but we haven't done that yet, so, mm -hmm. we, so we don't really know if it works the way we are envisioning it. Did you have something there, Suzanne? Oh, I was just going to say that we're a really charming bunch, and so don't be afraid that we're more than happy to help you know, architecting, making sure that it fits into your overall kind of architecture. And, and so what Suzanne is saying is that we're awesome, which is completely true about our entire team, except for me, I'm a jerk. Yeah. So I will, I will be sure to minus one year commits initially, but that's just how I show my appreciation. So <laughs> no, it's all good. So, more questions. Yeah. How do I upload uh, Avatar sketches by using Oh, that okay. I, That's I, actually I'm not part of this demo, but I so I'm, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> 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 we, we, uh, so, so, so the problem with TLS certification is that there's one tiny bug right now, so it won't work. But we have. Uh, we have a web website which explains exactly how it works, and I okay. was just working on that last week. And so it's our, on our wiki page, when you Google Octavia SSL or LBAS v2 SSL, mm -hmm. then that should you come pull up. It up? You I, I want to see if, if, it, if it loads. Again, the internet yeah. here is a little bit spotty. Yeah. SV2 TLS. You know which one you're talking about? It doesn't come up. I, I know it had it to us. It's on our wiki. wiki there. <coughs> there, how to create TLS. So, how to create TLS load balancer. 
and I was on there last week and and try to fix fix it. Okay, <laughs> excellent. By the way, we are certain that you're going to be able to break this in interesting ways that we haven't thought of. Please let us know when you do, because we want to fix those bugs. Um, one of our biggest goals, which is, again, part of the reason why we put other features on hold, was mm -hmm. we, want, we wanted to get this into Liberty so that people could start using it. Um, it's really important for us. We want to see people adopting this. So um, mm -hmm. please let us know when you, if you have yeah. troubles with it. Let us know what those are. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate fe any feedback you can give us. Yeah, the, the, the other thing you keep in mind when you want to do the TLS stuff, you have to add Barbican to it. And so you have to do this add enable Barbican, which we haven't done in your image. Yeah, your image isn't able to do the TLS stuff. It's, we didn't do that part of, the, of this demo. <laughs> so yeah, but all you have to do, you add that, you build your thing, and then, and then you can do all the commands there. They walk you, walk you through. And I went through that last week, found a bug, which we still have to fix. But other than uh, that, it's good. Yes. Here, hold this. Okay, more questions. Everybody. So how many services you can configure? How many services you can configure? How many services? You can configure for a single many, How many load bands? How many load? How many members? How many members can she put? How many members? How many members we can do? Is there a limit? There's there probably is a limit because there uh, has to be. But we haven't explored that. So I think we're using HABOX is the underlying thing. And I, I would guess we can do a couple. We are run out of RAM or something, as he said. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, are you, what was the question there? The question was how many, if you have a maximum number of members you can configure? No, the members, the members don't take up really any more, hardly any resources. Uh, I've, I've configured, n not in this particular situation, but in, in, uh, in previous, it's, it's all HA proxy based. And HA proxy can handle literally hundreds of members and be just fine. Yeah. So there aren't that many installations that are using hundreds. And if you are using hundreds, you might want to consider having more than one load balancer, I'm just saying. So, <laughs> so generally, I mean, uh, in, in practice, generally, is it done per tenant? Or? Uh, the, which done per tenant? The, the, per tenant. Oh yes, so uh, the M4s here that you see are not shared between tenants, okay. and that's for security reasons. Because the M4 is actually, if you if you use um, when you configure the members, again the member the the screen where it talks about configuring the members, you can specify a subnet you're going to connect to, and the M4 will actually cre create an interface on that that <laughs> subnet. And we don't, and since that can and usually is going to be a private tenant subnet, we don't want that exposed to other tenants. Yeah, okay. So that's why the M4s are not shared. I mean, so, you, so we basically leave it to Nova, and, and, and the operator can choose. If, if somebody wants to try and create, you know, a, an architecture that works with multi-tenant Amphoras, they're certainly welcome to write that blueprint. We will absolutely tear it apart, but that's a good thing. You might actually have a, a, you know, something that we didn't think of that, oh, we could do it that way, you know, running it like network namespaces within the M4 or something crazy like that to keep things separate. Um, mostly, though, you, when you consider that the, you know, uh, we have to try and keep all, all different tenants in mind with this stuff. And if you're talking about something that's going to be very large, which again, our Activia is aimed at, at you know, making sure we can definitely meet the very large use case, um, they're not, never going to want to be shared. But if you're talking about something very small, then, then there might be a, a good argument for having, you know, very small tenants might want to have a shared. The other thing, I don't know if our Nova got this, Devin Benko had talked about giving us localization so we could pack things that it you know where your members are, and, and they are planning on uh, having localization in, so you should really to put the load balance on the same rack. Come on, you should talk into the microphone. <laughs> well, we have, but the people who are listening to the recording okay. don't want to know. Okay, the, so, so, so basically, the, so basically okay. in Vancouver, we talked with the Nova team that 
so basically you have uh, localization hints. And one idea there is that you can put the load balance, your load balancing VM on the same rack or the same VM or the same server than your members to kind of cut down on database. And that's something we want to do when Nova has that. We have time to look into that. But that opens up the topology thing here. So the topology thing, I don't know if it came in Liberty. Because we are so busy getting Octavia finished, we didn't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> we could definitely use more engineering resources. If you're not getting that impression, let me just say that one more time. If you want to contribute, we would absolutely appreciate it. Do other people have any questions they would like to ask before we're done here? We, we only, so, so the way it works, you, you specify the, uh, the network the IP is on. So when you, when you do load bands like create, you give it a subnet. And that subnet, it will create an IP on it. If you, I, in theory, it should work with the public subnet, <laughs> but, I, but I don't think we, we, we support it. It's not a plan. So, so what we, we have planned is since since there are different needs for load bands, for instance, if you do a load bands in front of your database, then you don't want it to be public. So then put it on the, this network, and you need the public, then you put a floating IP in front of it. Mm -hmm. So, but in theory, you could, if you really want it to be, specify the public subnet, and then it will plug it, and maybe work, maybe not work. Yeah. Well, we'll. I guess we'll stick around here for another 20 yeah. minutes until this thing, or 15 minutes until this thing is over. If anyone has any other questions, otherwise, uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. And uh, you should have made it more clear that you needed bigger computers. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. So yeah, if I would, if would have known, we should have sent it to you a few months ahead, so you can ask your manager to buy you one for that. <laughs>